Jay, it's great to have you here back with us, sort of giving us a pulse check of where we are. We know that the government got involved. They were asking for longer hours at the ports in California. Is that helping at all relieve some of the congestion? Yeah, it sure does help relieve the congestion, and it's helping to get product to stores. So while we were really all panicking in September and October, uh, the consumer responded, got out early and started to buy, and the supply chain is filling up. But the fact that the ports are working 24-7 to unload the, the ships causes new problems. The new problem is so many containers piling up, not just of this Christmas's merchandise, but all the merchandise that's due to be put on the shelf after Christmas. On top of that, there's a big problem with getting the empty containers, those big metal containers, back to the port and back on ships to send back to China. So when the next round of merchandise is ready to go, they have enough of those containers to fill up. Right now, there's a shortage in China uh, of those metal containers. So every time you solve a problem, unfortunately, a new problem pops up. You know, Jay, we, we spoke about how Basic Fund's toy lineup includes like Care Bears, My Little Pony, Lincoln Logs, Tonka, Connects. I mean, these are iconic toys. But you also point out that while you do sell many well-known toys and you aren't necessarily a small retailer, you're not as big as a Walmart or a Target or a Costco or a Home Depot that's chartering their own ships. So it seems like from them, they've been OK with their inventory. Things are working through. Is that not the case if you're not that big and you can't afford to charter your own ships? For sure. I mean, that's why we're working in war rooms 24-7, because we have to scramble to find all the empty space. Listen, those big retailers employ a lot of people and they supply a lot of merchandise. And that's the, that's the benefit of being big. It's the small guy that's really got to scramble. And the frustration on the part of smaller vendors like ourselves is we don't seem to get representation. So when the administration is having meetings to talk about supply chain, there's never any small guys there. There's no basic funds there. Uh, so we're sort of left to our own devices to try to figure out how to get capacity on these container ships and bring our merchandise in. And sometimes a lot of our merchandise will go to places like Walmart and Target, but a lot of times they're also going to places like Learning Express and the local toy store on your, on your corner or in your shopping mall. So it's always the little guy always has a problem. So can you give us, uh, our viewers, an example or two of items this year, this holiday season, that you weren't able to bring in at the level of stock that you anticipated? Are there a couple sure. of, of concrete examples that, that you said, well, we couldn't get the large size Care Bear, we, but we got lots of the smaller ones? Absolutely. That, that's 100 percent true. I mean, our, our most iconic item that we make is something called the Mighty Dump Truck. It's a big Tonka truck about so big. And the freight on that truck went from two dollars a piece to ten dollars a piece. And that truck only retails for twenty five to thirty dollars. So when the cost to bring it in alone is a, a, a third of the cost or the selling price of the, of the product, it really gives us a problem. So we've left thousands and thousands of trucks back at the factory because we just can't afford to bring them in. So that means a little bit more scarcity of the product here, but also less volume and less profit for and less margin for you and, all. Let me let me turn to one margin. other question that has been been perplexing me for, for weeks now, and it is this. How did it all go so wrong? What why was everything working very smoothly, it would seem, in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019? And this year, we, it goes bluey, and everybody says we can't get stuff, and the prices are five times what they were for containers. What happened? Well, really, two things happened. Obviously, COVID. And when COVID in 2000 closed down the factories, there was a complete rebalance of where all the shipping ended up and was stationed. Then when, when China opened back up, the rest of the world closed down. The U.S. and Europe closed down. So it really caused an imbalance. I always think of it like... like the conveyor belt in that, uh, you know, Lucille Ball skit where they're mm, got to shove yeah, the, right. the candies in their mouth because they're, they're just piling up. And you, you just had this whole confluence on top of demand increasing by 30 percent for these type of consumer products. And the shipping capacity is only geared for 100, 105 percent. So there's just so much demand and not enough uh, capacity, whether it's truck, rail, or steamship to bring it in, and it just causes chaos, just like that conveyor belt. And if you want to add one more, you know, sort of complication to it, think about 
just trying to get the chocolates in the box and ship them. But imagine if you had to get all the empty boxes returned and sent back to the factory mm -hmm. instead of discarded. We have to get all those containers back. That causes another tremendous problem. And yeah. of course, the, the imbalance in labor. We don't have enough labor in this country, you know, uh, from top to bottom. So obviously and it's that's a, a confluence of things, but but high demand and and a capacity that could have absorbed 105 percent when you got 130 percent demand. That's the basic. And some of the containers were just in the wrong place right. at the wrong time. Right.